All right. So, uh, all good things must come to an end. And that includes the Shader Dev series. This is likely going to be the last video. And this is the appendix. So you can kind of consider the series as far as shader development uh, is concerned is kind of done. But I felt like I wouldn't do the series justice unless I at least talked for one brief episode about OpenGL. Um, so some of you guys might be curious um, as to how one would utilize shaders in a full-fledged from scratch C++ program that uses OpenGL as opposed to using a tool like Virto Studio. And if you're interested in making your own engine or developing your own engine or you're interested in doing a 3D game without using one of the bigger engines, um, you might want to check this, this stuff out. And uh, it's important that before I show you guys this code, I've, I've essentially tried to compact the entire OpenGL 3.2 setup into one C++ source file and as a disclaimer that is not the correct way to do a game engine or to make a game at all. Um, I will flash uh, at, towards the end of the video a link for a code repository that I also wrote that shows you the more correct way to um, write a system that uses OpenGL. Um, but this is just for explanation. So what I've done here is I got a program and it's a C++ program and uh, everything is in this one file so it's kind of show you basically from scratch doing C++, how do you initialize OpenGL 3.2, how do you initialize shaders, how do you initialize a simple sphere, and how do you draw the sphere with the said shader. So for starters uh, I've jumped us right to the main function so you can see kind of the first thing the program does when it starts. Um, some of this code was STL tutorial code, and some of this code was stuff that I wrote. So um, don't judge me by some of this stuff. It's definitely not my coding style. Um, so for starters, uh, we're using SDL2 because it's one of the more popular systems for uh, multi-platform initialization of just getting a window on the screen and initializing a raw core OpenGL context. Um, so. If you guys are more interested or want to learn more about how SDL works and you've never done any kind of coding at all before outside of you know this shader dev thing being your first exposure to programming languages at all, you might want to check out my Learn Programming in C uh, tutorial series. So what I do here is I declare a main window, which is an SDL window, a GL context, which manages my OpenGL context for me, and I initialize this SDL with the init video flag. Then I set some OpenGL attributes, namely we need double buffering, which is something you almost always need when you're doing OpenGL. And we're using a 24-bit depth buffer, which is usually pretty sufficient for, for doing any kind of uh, 3D game development. Next, we um, set some attributes which are only present in the absolute latest version of SDL2, and that is that we want it to give us an OpenGL 3.2 core context and what that means is that we are not supporting any of the deprecated old features from the old school OpenGL 2.1 um, so that's what these three lines do. So once all that stuff's ready we essentially create our window and we basically create a 512 by 512 uh, size window and that's going to be the size of our screen or our, our window coordinate system. After that we create an SDLGL context which is just a one-liner function call and then finally we verify that we've got the OpenGL version that we're looking for. And that should print out at least OpenGL 3.2 depending on the system you're running on. On my Mac it gives me a uh, OpenGL 4.1 Intel and it's Intel because my uh, discrete graphics card, my NVIDIA card, is busy doing AirPlay and for some reason when you AirPlay you can't get your NVIDIA card. So after that um, I just make sure we really do get OpenGL 3.2 and then I set vsync on which is really not that useful for this example and I actually set up some things so the first thing I set up is the OpenGL viewport to basically make sure that the OpenGL system that or the OpenGL graphics pipeline um, the window size or the viewport size matches my window size which is 5, 5, 512 by 512 which is important I turn on depth testing which is also called Z buffering which is important and um, I declare an object, or an, I, I guess you can call this an identifier, um, an OpenGL uint 
um, called VIO, which stands for Vertex Array Object. In OpenGL 3.2, all 3D meshes must um, be contained within uh, a VAO. And uh, I could talk a lot about OpenGL. That's not the point of this video. It's just to kind of show you what um, what is the basic what is what is life? You know, sometimes I just don't know. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> well, whatever. Um, VAO is basically, oh yeah, at OpenGL, GLUint is used to reference all the objects there is. So like I said, this video is not going to tell you everything there is to know about OpenGL. If I did that, there'd be a video series that was like 500 videos long. Um, but anyway, you should know that GLUint is basically a reference to, to an index to something on the graphics card, in this case, a vertex array object. God, that was a lot of words to say one thing. Um, so we're going to set up a couple things. For starters, we're going to create one vertex array object, which is the one that we're, the only one we're going to use for this entire example, and we're going to bind it so that it is in use. We are then going to generate a sphere from scratch in code, and what GenSphere does is essentially evaluates this fun-looking parametric surface function, which is a parametric surface generator, which generates a sphere for us. Um, the basic gist of how a vertex buffer object uh, works in OpenGL is that basically you need to generate some buffers. The buffers hold your data, for example, your vertices in this case and your indices in the next case. And essentially what it is is it's an array, very long array of floats, and you have essentially tuples of three floats. So for example, every vertex is stored XYZ, 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 and you basically have three times the number of vertices that you're storing in your model. And then your EBO is the same thing, but with uint, unsigned integers, and those are your indices, um, which are basically um, pairs of three integers that represent um, three at a time for uh, th three indices making up a triangle. So this is basically going to store triangles. So the best way you can think of this without confusing you any further is that if you had an array of um, vertices or points and your array was indexed like this there's the zeroth one, the first one, the second one, and the third one your index array might contain something like 0, 1, 2 and what that basically says, and there might be another one that says 2, 3, 5 assuming that this number goes higher to some n so what the index buffer does is says, I want my triangle to contain the zeroth point, a triangle containing from the zeroth vertex, the first vertex, and then the second vertex. And basically what that does is it creates a triangle from these three points. So that's what the indexing uh, buffer does. And we're going to generate all that. We're going to put it inside a giant C++ vector containing both the vertices and the, um, the indices. And once we've got all this code, which generates our parametric um, um, sphere, both containing vertices, normals, which are the same array format as the vertices, and indices, once we have all that data, what we do is we basically define the buffer that we're interested in initializing the data to. We give a call to GL buffer data, which basically supplies it the data and tells it how the byte size of how much data it's expecting, which is, like I said, the number of vertices. Um, times four instead of three. Oh, I'm doing. I think I'm doing. I think I'm doing quads here, guys. I don't think I'm doing triangles. I might be doing quads. I will confirm that shortly. So that generates our sphere. Then we have a call to set up shader, which is probably the part that's the most interesting um, aspect for this entire video, which I'm going to cover last because I'm a jerk. Um, use program basically uh, doesn't make sense to not cover shader right now, so I'm going to. So this is the way shaders are actually done in OpenGL when you're doing OpenGL from scratch. They are pretty wild. Essentially what you're actually doing is you're storing the shader code in a string, this is just one string, for the, both the vertex shader and the fragment shader, and that string can come from hand typed like this, or it can be loaded from a file, which is typically done in a game engine. You'll load your shaders from .vs and .fs files. Or if you have a system like Virto Studio, they might be embedded into your scene file when they're saved with the scene. Then you create a shader program, which is one 
you can think of a shader program as the whole shader. You should generate one of those. Then you generate the sub, what the, the little sub programs are, the individual vertex and fragment shaders, you generate those. And you basically supply the source code to OpenGL for each shader. So you give a call to GL shader source, which says this vertex shader has one string containing an array of source code strings, and each each of the um, strings is of length lengths. And then the little special call to GL compile shader actually compiles the shader code using a freaking OpenGL function call, which is awesome and also kind of insane. If you want to see whether or not there was a syntax error or you just messed your shader up or if there was some kind of build failure, failure, you can get your compile status and determine whether or not the vertex shader succeeded in compiling or not. And if it did, you move on to the fragment shader, which is all doing the exact same thing, except we're using GL fragment shader as the shader type. We supply it the source code, we compile it, we check to make sure it didn't fail, and then we attach the succeeded shaders to the shader program. We bind the attribute location, which is basically just tells us which of our buffer objects contain which data that the shader needs. What this is saying is that the special index 0 corresponds to the position input to the vertex shader. The index 1 corresponds to the normal. And once we bind, bound, bind, bound those attribute locations, we link the program, make sure the link was successful. And if it was, we don't need the actual shader objects anymore. We detach them and we delete them, but we keep the shader program itself, which is the compiled shader, alive. And this function call, setup shader, does all that. So once the shader's been set up, we use the program, which basically says to OpenGL, any future draw operations use this shader. In OpenGL 3.2, you have to have a custom shader at all times, um, compiled, linked, and in use before you draw anything. There is no default shader, it has to be handwritten. Um, so this basically does that for me. Then I get the special index into, a, into the uniform location. This particular shader, if you look above in the shader code, I only use one uniform, which is called the model view projection matrix. And the model view projection matrix, essentially I need to supply that to the shader as an argument. And the way I do that is I um, first obtain the index location from the shader program of, of I'm going to basically use this value later to set it. Then I declare some special structures called MAT4. MAT4, if you look up here, is basically nothing more than an array of 16 floats stored in each column. So 0, 1, 2, 3 is the first column, and then 4, 5, 6, 7 is the second column, and so forth, all the way up to 16. So I declare a MAT4. For my model view matrix, my model view projection matrix, and my projection matrix. I have a special C function called generate translate matrix, and what that does is basically generates a translation matrix for me and returns it. And then I have another function after generate translation matrix, which generates a perspective projection matrix for me. And basically what this does is it tells, it's very ugly looking code, and I just kind of supplied it right here, and it basically generates my OpenGL frustum, which is a special projection matrix which does respective correct projection for me. And basically what I'm doing is I'm telling it I want a 45 degree uh, field of view angle. The aspect ratio is 1, which is from 512 comma 512 is a one, as 1 by 1 aspect ratio or 1 to 1. My near plane, which is my near zipping plane, is at 0 0.1 units and my far clipping plane is at 1000 units. Once I have my translation matrix, which essentially is a camera transform that moves the camera 10 units back uh, away from the object that I want to shade, which is my sphere, I generate the model view projection matrix by, of course, composing the projection matrix and the model view matrix and storing the result in MVP matrix. mat 4 malt is a 4x4 four four matrix multiplication. This function alone should make you glad that you, you are usually doing this stuff in GLSL because it looks pretty ugly in C++. So once I have my model view projection matrix, it's going to stay still for the, uh, this demo. I also check the OpenGL error to make sure none of this stuff failed. And I enter it into my game loop or my event loop. And what this does is draws the screen repeatedly over and over again until someone hits escape. And process events just make sure basically that I didn't hit escape. And if I do, it quits the loop out. So finally we get to draw something with all this crazy setup. We call GL clear color, which basically clear, uh, sets the clear color to be a um, 
red, green, uh, dark blue color. We call GL clear, which clears the color buffer and the depth buffer, which is something you need to do before you draw every frame if you're going to have anything that doesn't cover the entire screen. Lastly but not leastly, we enable the two vertex arrays uh, attribute inputs to the vertex shader. If you remember, zero corresponds to position, one corresponds to normal. And we bind the array buffer, which corresponds to the sphere vertex buffer object, which contains both the vertices and the normals, and we supply the pointer offsets, or the pointers, uh, yeah, we supply basically the pointer offsets to how to find the uh, vertices and the normals within the sphere VBO. The Sphere VBO actually has a layout that looks more like this. So this is the first vertex, this is the first normal, this is the second vertex, and this is the second normal, like so. And it goes on forever. That's what this code does. It basically tells it how to find that data within the Sphere VBO uh, GPU memory. Then we do the same thing for the EBO, which is the element buffer object, which contains the indices and how to draw the spheres. All we need to do is bind that. And last, we make a call to GL triangles, GL draw elements with GL triangles, and we're telling it that we are drawing sphere count number of triangles. And those indices are in the format of unsigned integer. And zero just tells us to basically draw, start from the beginning of the EBO uh, memory. Once we have accomplished this, and hopefully nothing went wrong, we swap the window, and this basically tells us we're done drawing. It swaps the front buffer and back buffer. It's the equivalent of, you can think of, like a, a, a bit blip from the old school days of graphics. Once the user hits escape, the program's done. We delete all the crap. We destroy the context. We destroy the program. We destroy your house. And uh, it's the end. And after all this work, when I run this, we see a sphere that's shaded with my shader. So that's OpenGL from scratch. Um, I wanted to show you guys this because this is why sometimes it's useful to learn shaders by themselves because you can get really lost in all the complexity of OpenGL if you're trying to learn OpenGL and shaders at the same time. Um, so yeah, if you guys are more interested in how uh, engine development works, I do have a GitHub repo which has an open source version of the preliminary uh, C++ port of my Virto Studio graphics engine uh, ported to C++11. You're more than welcome to check that out. I really want to thank you guys that have stuck with me throughout the entire Shader Dev series. Um, all the likes and stuff, that's really cool. People that have subscribed, that's really cool as well. Um, you know, I'm doing this stuff because I remember how sparse this material was when I was learning this stuff. I had to teach myself a lot of this crap and that's kind of not cool. So uh, I'm hoping that this stuff can help people learn a little easier than, than it was when, um, when I went through this. Um, because this stuff is, there's not a lot of feedback when you get this stuff run. Usually you just get a black screen and uh, it's not fun. So um, I hope you guys were able to learn from the series and uh, I don't plan on stop making YouTube videos. You know, I plan to keep doing them, but I'm gonna, the shader thing's gonna be on hiatus for a while until I have the energy to, to keep doing this stuff. Um, if you guys like to help me out, you know, uh, feel free to spread the word about Virto Studio to anybody you know who might be interested in both modeling art and learning how to program shaders. So uh, that's it, guys. Thank you.